This morning, John Bradshaw from It Is Written is with us here today to share an encouraging message with us. Great to see you today. I hope your day's off to a great start. I'm really glad we have a couple of moments together. I want to share with you something that I believe will assist you today. You can put this into practice today and be blessed and benefited. No question about it. Now, there are some things that you just wish would go away. The oppressive heat, you wish that would go away. Or or, or the long, cold winter, you can't wait for that to go away. It might be it might be the, the, the crying child in the row behind you on the airplane, and you don't want the child to go away, but you do wish the crying would go away so that your peace and peace of mind would return. You understand what I mean. There are certain things we wish would just go away, but some things are not going to go away. Taxation is not going to go away. You wish it would, but it's not, for example. Something else, I think a little more serious, that will never go away is temptation. If only temptation would go away. But once you come to faith in Jesus, you find temptation doesn't go away. You can attend church, temptation doesn't go away. You can pray, temptation doesn't go, it doesn't go away no matter what you do. Because the devil is still in business He has taken it upon himself to tempt you in an attempt to separate you from God, to weaken your faith and have you loosen your hold on God. Now, I don't want you to confuse temptation and sin. They are two different things. It is not a sin to be tempted. The Bible says this in James 1 and verse 14. Well, let's start in verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. That's what the Bible says. James 1 verse 14 says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires or lusts and enticed. That's temptation. When something is tugging at you, that's temptation. It's not sin. When something appeals to you, that's not sin. That's temptation. The passage goes on to say, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. So we pray in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. We don't want to place ourselves in the situation to be tempted. You don't want to rush in where angels fear to tread, but temptation exists. You go out, it's there. You come home, it's there. You close your eyes. Temptation can still be there. And I'm talking about temptation rather than sin. So what do you do so that you don't cave into temptation? Because you've heard all kinds of people say, the devil made me do it, or I just couldn't resist any longer, or I weakened. The the, the devil tempted me in a weak moment. So what do you do when temptation comes? Okay, there are two verses that I'd like to share with you just to help you know that temptation doesn't have to drag you into places you don't want to go. Jude verse 24. What chapter? No, no, the book is the chapter. There's only one chapter. So the book of Jude verse 24, it's the book right before Revelation. It begins by saying, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. So that means that when temptation comes, God can keep you. Oh, and he will given certain parameters. Another verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, which says, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape so that you might be able to bear it. Now you see what that said? The Bible says that there's no temptation so great that God cannot keep you from it. Now, you know that. You either knew that or you know it now, and you're saying, well, what in the world then? If this is what the Bible says, why am I not successful in the face of temptation? Why am I not doing better when temptation comes along? Jude, he can keep you from falling. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, And he wrote that there's no temptation so great that it's got to drag you down. So why do we struggle, do you think? Well, I'll give you the answer. 
One thing that you want to do when temptation comes along is not entertain the temptation. You want to fend off that temptation as quickly as possible. You don't want to play with it. You don't want to dabble with it. You don't want to get close to the edge of the cliff of temptation. Some people do that. They see how close they could get to sin before long they've fallen over the edge. Years and years ago, a friend of mine told me this, uh, this story, just a story. Uh, a king was interviewing prospective chariot drivers and as part of the test, he asked them one by one, if you were my chariot driver, how close to the edge of the cliff could you get me? The first one said, oh, king, live forever. If I was your chariot driver, I'd get you to within six inches of the edge of that cliff. Oh, that's impressive. He asked the next one, what could you do? He said, oh, king, live forever. If, if I was your chariot driver, I could get you to within three inches of the edge of that cliff. And they all turned to the third one and he said, oh, king, live forever. If I was your chariot driver, I'd get you as far from the edge of that cliff as I possibly could. And you know who in this story got the job. You want to stay away from temptation. One of the reasons that we struggle and suffer is that we feed our lusts so that when temptation comes along, boom, it just takes us down. If you spend all day long uh, gazing on members of the opposite sex in a lustful fashion, and then a temptation comes across your keyboard to visit an inappropriate website, you're already so weak, you likely have no defenses or virtually no defenses. Another thing, if you're not praying, you have not been strengthened by God so that when the temptation comes along, what is there within you to resist? If you're not reading the Word of God and getting the Word of God deep into your mind, how do you think you're going to have any strength to resist temptation? The answer is, quite frankly, you won't have any strength and you won't resist the temptation. All right, here's something you need to know. The Bible says this in James 4. We were in James 1 before, but this is James 4 and verse 7. Therefore, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist. Too many people don't resist the devil. They assist the devil. In the wilderness, Jesus resisted the devil. How? By quoting the Bible. It is written, he said. It is written, he said. And a third time he said, it is written, and he quoted the scriptures. And so if you resist the devil, He'll flee. You meet him with the promises of God. You meet him with the power of prayer. You meet him with a life lived for the honor of God. You meet him with a determination that you won't cave and you do this. Let, let's go on and read one little bit more. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So we draw near, we submit. If you are yielded to God, Jesus is living his life in you. If you are surrendered to God, you have the power of God living in your life. So here's what you want to do. Surrender to God. Fill your mind and heart with the things of heaven. Resist in the power of Jesus. Temptation doesn't have to master you or own you today. Great to see you. Have a good day. God bless you. 